This is going to be an overview of the book of Micah. This is a minor prophet. It's a very short book. Historically, what you have is a prophecy of the judgment of Samaria and Jerusalem. Remember, you've got three applications. And that's the historical application. That lets you know that it talks about a certain events that took place in history. Now, doctrinally, you've got the tribulation, second coming, and restoration of Israel. That's doctrinally, prophetically, tribulation, second coming, and restoration of Israel. God will use uh, his prophets talking about historical things. At the same time, they're talking about prophetical things. And then devotionally, how can me and you read this and get something for us from day to day? Devotionally, you see how God seeks and saves sinners even though we are dead in trespasses and sins. Now, the name Micah means who is like Jehovah. This book is pre-exilic. It was before the captivity. And we see that in Micah 4.10 where it says, Be in pain, and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. There shalt thou be delivered. There the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. So it's before the Babylonian captivity. But the book has seven chapters, 105 verses, and 3,153 words. Now, chapter 1, we see the coming destruction on Samaria. In chapter 1, straight out of the gate, you see the second coming of Jesus Christ. Micah 1, 3, and 4. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place and will come down and tread upon the high places of the earth, and the mountains shall be molten under him, and the valleys shall be cleft as wax before the fire, and the waters that are poured down, as, down a steep place. Jesus Christ is coming down in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God. That's what's going to happen at the second coming. And that's what you see over and over again in these minor prophets. In Malachi 4 1 it says, For behold the day cometh saith for behold the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Doctrinally, what you have here in chapter 1 of Micah is the second coming. Jesus Christ will come down out of heaven. He's going to slay all the God-haters. But historically, it was the coming doom of Samaria. Micah 1.6, Therefore I will make Samaria as an heap of the field, and as plantings of a vineyard, and I will pour down the stones thereof into the valley, and I will discover the foundations thereof. You know, always be reminded... The evil that's going on in this world is not going to go unpunished. God sees everything that the nations are doing. He sees everything that people are doing. None of, it, none of it's going unpunished. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. In chapter 2, you have a warning to men that oppress. These powerful oppressors are covetous and violent. Micah 2.1 Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds when the morning is light they practice it because it isn't in the power of their hand why do people commit such horrible things it's because they have the power to do it power in the hands of the wrong person can be dangerous and the devil likes to put power in the hands of evil men men that will fall down and worship him and they will lay in bed at night and devise iniquity how can they get more money how can they take from the innocent in Micah 2.2 2 it says, And they covet fields, and take them by violence, and houses, and take them away. So they oppress a man in his house, even a man in his heritage. Evil men. They covet. They want what you have. Micah 2.12 and 13, I will surely assemble, O Jacob, all of thee. I will surely gather the remnant of Israel. I will put them together as the sheep of Basra, as the flock in the midst of their fold. They shall make great noise by reason of the multitude of men. The breaker has come up before them. They have broken up and have passed through the gate and are gone out by it. And their king shall pass before them and the Lord on the head of them. Look at that. The, their king shall pass before them and the Lord on the head of them. God's going to gather his people back together. 
He's gonna he's coming down out of the clouds on a white horse with his saints. The king is coming back, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's going to be ahead of them on a white horse. Their king shall pass before them, and the Lord on the head of them. Revelation nineteen sixteen. And on his, on his, he he hath on his vesture, and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Micah is an, isn't an outdated book. It is showing you the future right here. And in chapter 3, Micah goes against the false prophets. You see the heirs of the princes and prophets, and you see some tribulation prophecy in this chapter. But it says in Micah 3, 2, and 3, Who hate the good and love the evil, who pluck off their skin from off them and their flesh from off their bones, who also eat the flesh of my people and flay their skin from off them, and they break their bones and chop them in pieces as for the pot and as flesh within the cauldron. You see, in the tribulation, God's people will be sacrificed and eaten by the Antichrist and workers of iniquity. And you already see people talking about uh, cannibalism. In the Katy Perry video, she does; she had some cannibalism stuff. And you know, uh, that witch, I, I can't recall her name, but she had that uh, dinner party with all these celebrities where they had a, a fake human body, a fake edible human body, and they were all eating its body parts. And they had heads on a platter looking at them while they ate. The heads of uh, live people pretending to be dead looking at them on a platter while they were eating the uh, fake human body. It, it was pretty sick. And you see, that's where this thing is going. Cannibalism. And that's what's going to be in the tribulation. In Micah 3, 5, it says, Thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people err, that bite with their teeth and cry, Peace. And he that putteth not into their mouths, they even prepare war against him. A false prophet will make the people err. Thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people err. He will give them bad doctrine. He will speak to them smooth things and deceive the people. In chapter 4, you'll see God's coming restoration and millennial, the millennial kingdom. In Micah 4, 1 and 4, 2, But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow into it. And many nations shall come and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, and to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the law shall go forth of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. In the millennium, we will go and hear the word, word taught by the Lord himself. Wouldn't you, like, wouldn't you like to hear the Lord teach you his word verse by verse? In Micah 4, 3, it says, And he shall judge among many people and rebu rebuke strong nations afar off, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pr pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. Their swords and spears will be turned into working equipment that they'll enjoy the work of their own hands. You won't hear about wars and rumors of wars and everybody fighting. They won't have to learn war anymore. In Micah 4 and 5, Micah 4, 4 and 5, But they shall sit every man under his vine and under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken it. For all people will walk everyone in the name of his God, and we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. And... You're not going to have to worry about evil government. You're not going to have to worry about anything like that. People oppressing you anymore. The Lord's going to be in charge. The Lord restores Israel. Micah 4, 6, and 7. In that day, saith the Lord, will I assemble her that halteth, and I will gather her that is driven out, and her that I have afflicted, and I will make her that halted a remnant, and her that was cast off, cast far off a strong nation. And the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth even forever. This is when the Lord, Jesus Christ, has taken the kingdom. Uh, the, 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 his people that were scattered off, he's getting them back together. They're going to get their land. And it's going to be a, a kingdom of peace a thousand years. And Revelation eleven fifteen says, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. That's what's coming. And in chapter 5, you have a prophecy of Jesus being born in Bethlehem. 
And you also have a second coming prophecy as well, but Micah 5, 2, But thou Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting, showing you that God is going to be manifested in the flesh, showing you a virgin birth is coming. And then you have the day of the Lord. Micah 5, 10 through 15, And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that I will cut off thy horses out of the midst of thee, and I will destroy thy chariots, and I will cut off the cities of thy land, and throw down all thy strongholds, and I will cut off witchcrafts out of thine hand, and thou shalt have no more soothsayers, thy graven images. Also will I cut off thy standing images out of the midst of thee, and thou shalt no more worship the work of thine hands. And I will pluck up thy groves out of the midst of thee, so will I destroy thy cities. And I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. He's coming back. He's coming back in a vengeance. He's coming back in fury. That is what the second coming is all about. God's anger and fury that he's had pin up all this time. In chapter 6, you have the destruction of the wicked. The Lord pleads with Israel and warns them about future suffering. He pleads with his people. He has done everything for them, and yet they won't turn to him. Just like he's done everything for you. Jesus Christ died for you. He's given you everything you have, and you won't live for him. Micah 6, 4 and 5, For I brought thee up out of the land of Egypt, and redeemed thee out of the house of servants. And I sent before thee Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, O my people. Remember now what Balak king of Moab consulted, and what Balaam the son of Beor answered him from Shittim and Gilgal, that ye may know the righteousness of the Lord. Then he says in verse 13 and 14, Therefore also will I make thee sick and smiting thee, and making thee desolate because of thy sins. Thou shalt eat, but not be satisfied, and thy casting down shall be in the midst of thee, and thou shalt take hold, but shalt not deliver. And that which thou deliverest will I give up to the sword. He pleads with his people in this chapter. He warns them about future suffering. And then in chapter 7, you have the character of the people in the tribulation. Micah 7, 5, Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a God. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. You won't be able to trust anybody. And when it comes right down to it, you can't trust anybody even today. But men are getting worse and worse. You really won't be able to trust anybody in the tribulation. Pa uh, kids will sell out their own parents to the Antichrist henchmen during that time. Micah 7, 6, and 7. For the son dishonoreth the father, the daughter rises up against her mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. Therefore I will look upon the Lord, I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. God and his word are the only 100% trustworthy sources even today, and especially in the triv, because the love of many is going to wax cold according to what Jesus said in Matthew 24. But Micah 7, 17, they shall lick the dust like a serpent. They shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth. They shall be afraid of the Lord our God and shall fear because of thee. There's no need to worry. There's no need to fear because the one that is truly feared is on your side if you are a born again believer.